I'd like to talk a little bit now about the process of vision screening and why we screen the vision of young children. Something that confuses lots of people and I think is worth spending a few minutes trying to clarify to people out there. The purpose of vision screening is to do a few tests that can help the screener. Sometimes it's an eye doctor, sometimes it's a nurse, sometimes it's another individual who's trained to do this. It can be a variety of people doing a variety of different kinds of tests. The tests are done to try to identify a child that may be having a problem with their vision. The screening never tells us for sure that a child has a problem, and it certainly never tells us that the child has a particular problem. All vision screening does is it tells us that a child may have a problem that requires a full eye examination done by an eye doctor who is experienced in caring for children in order to determine if there is a problem and if so, what we need to do about it. Now fortunately, most of the vision problems that affect children are not gigantic problems. The most common problems that affect children are problems that require, in some cases at least, the use of eyeglasses. Those problems are in many ways the same as those that affect adults. Occasionally a child will have trouble seeing far away and needs a pair of glasses, just as with very many adults. Sometimes a child may be farsighted, and that means that the child may have a little bit of difficulty seeing up close. And if they were to try looking up close for a long period of time, the child might develop eye strain or headaches or things like that. However, most of the time, most kids with vision problems don't actually show any problems that can be identified by parents or teachers, or for that matter, even pediatricians, if the screening has not actually been done. So, in Head Start and daycare and other organized kinds of child care, screening is very often done on children in order to determine if the child is likely to have no problem or the child might have a problem and the only way to determine what the problem is is to do a complete eye exam. So the most common problem that we ultimately find in children is a need for glasses. Sometimes the problem can be worse. Sometimes the need for glasses can be so great that it may cause an eye to either turn or cross. We call that strabismus. Or sometimes it can also cause a problem that we call amblyopia and people typically call a lazy eye. And that is when one eye is not working properly. It's not seen properly. If the child is using only one eye most of the time and is not able to use the other eye, easily and effectively, it can cause a whole variety of problems with the child's vision, but it can also cause problems that may affect the child's ability to do well in school, to develop reading skills, and ultimately to go on and, and get a full education. So those are the conditions we mostly look for. Occasionally, we may find conditions that are even more serious than that. Even though eye diseases are relatively rare in children, they sometimes do occur. Most of those conditions occur when a child is undergoing fetal development, when the mom is pregnant with the child. And something goes wrong uh, during the pregnancy. The child develops a problem in the development of a normal eyeball. And the child is born without all the structure and function that a normal healthy eye can provide. Those children often become um, evident to us at a very young age. We don't worry that much about it in the preschool years. We worry a lot more about identifying children either with a lazy eye or the conditions that often lead to a lazy eye. 